Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Welcome to another episode of the Tennis Nerd Podcast, this time the video version. Uh, I'm talking to Dennis Fabian, the head of business development when it comes to strings, accessories, stringing machines and so on at head. Uh, well, I've talked to him before about Lynx Tour. This time we talk about many different topics as well. Dennis is super knowledgeable about strings, rackets and, and all these things, tennis. So he's a very interesting guy to talk to and he's been behind the development of the new Lynx touch string. So we talk about developing that string, what makes that string different. And we also talk about uh, things like why you shouldn't leave a hybrid setup for several months and what happens, you know, and uh, how different color overgrips are tacky or not, how different color strings play and many other topics that I think can be of benefit to you in your tennis playing life. So I hope you listen to the podcast, find it useful and I hope you like it click like and subscribe to the channel. Please support me on patreon.com slash tennis nerd uh, or by buying something from my affiliates. The links are in the description if you like the stuff I do. So we start the podcast. Uh, this is done over Zoom, sadly. It's always better to do these face to face, but you know there's something called COVID around. And Dennis was in Kennelbach in Austria in the head office and I was in my headquarters here in Malta. So we managed to do this over Zoom. We jump straight into the action. I ask him about how often he goes to New York. Uh, Dennis is a uh, New York and a sneaker fan. And uh, that's things he like, likes outside of tennis. And he tries to travel to New York quite frequently. Uh, so that's where we start off the conversation. Big thanks to Dennis for taking part. Uh, also keen to know what kind of guest would you like to see next. Uh, I'm trying to get more interesting guests to talk about gear and other things. Tennis sometimes... Some companies are not so open to uh, taking part for some reason, but Head has been nice to, to join. Uh, but I'm definitely keen to talk to any other company that will be willing to, to share some, some uh, information on the Tennis Nerd podcast. So if you have any ideas for interesting guests, please let me know in the comments below. That's about it. Let's jump straight into it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis. How often do you go back? Well, Depends usually... COVID. Well... Outside COVID, like usually at least three times a year. Yeah. Um, but uh, I tried like five, six times actually. Like okay. usually it's a tradition that I spend time uh, during Thanksgiving with a team over there, like with my friends. Um, then uh, usually for the so Super Bowl weekend, like watching like on TV with the crew. And then for sure US Open anyways, and then like some other trips depending on flight costs and what the schedule allows but it's always great to be there the city changes all the time so it's never boring yeah no i know i, I love it as well uh so how is uh, how is austria doing it's locked down or you're, you're at the office or you're home no i'm at the office like today is a national holiday but like i thought it's better to go to the office like um to, to be about here <laughs> no 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 problem like I, I just caught up on it's quiet time so like you can catch up on a lot of things i mean definitely things are a little bit different these days uh, even in your workflow and work processes yeah. unfortunately um yeah it's still locked down here in austria i think it's gonna like they will announce today but like yesterday they already said like that the, the let's say the big lockdown where everything is shut down will end on monday and okay, nice. um, then there will be some sort of restrictions or things that are coming up uh whatever those 2g yeah. 3g 2g plus whatever rules they, <laughs> they might come up with yeah um, i'm lucky enough like i'm at least getting my third vaccination on friday it's like now five and a half months ago so yeah it's it's fine i mean it's it is what it is these days like i Stop. I think that's the attitude you have to have. It is what it is. I think that's the most sane attitude you can do about anything like this. It's, it's it was a bit crazy. So just take it for what it is and do the best you can. You know, I think that's pretty much. Yeah, philosophy. I mean, minimizing risk as, as best as you can. Well, me saying this might be crazy that I have uh, did fly over to, to New York. But like, honestly speaking, it was pretty cool like to see how everyone follows the rules, how everyone is mindful of like um, everyone. Anyway, I don't like if people are standing super close to you, no matter if it's Corona or not, like some exactly, people yeah. tend to do this. So like right now it's even more relaxed partly and I don't have troubles to stand in line for a shop or something if they have uh, restricted numbers, because then you have actually a more relaxed shopping experience as well. So everything has its good and bad. 
So, but... Yeah, I think that's a positive approach. And I think that makes sense. And also you have to live. So traveling is the part of life. I think it's, it, I mean, you, you just have to be a bit careful, but otherwise you can travel. Uh, I, I felt like it was much better as soon as I started traveling again. You know, it was much felt like it was more normal, even if you're doing masks and, and the vaccine certifi certificates and stuff like that, right? Sure, sure. I mean, I'm in a lucky position that I'm like, like here down in Lake Constance, first of all, beautiful area, even though I'm not a winter person, but like most of my colleagues, they love the stuff that's coming from the sky right now. It's like nah. the big, big snowflakes. Um, and then like my house is in Karlsruhe, so like I always travel like the two, three hours every two weeks. So I get a little bit out of my usual surrounding, which a lot of people can't. So like, yeah, um, if I complain, it's complaining on a super high level, to be honest, uh, looking at uh, what other families or kids are in uh, in these kind of days. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's fine. It's like, I think good. we will go through it at some point and hopefully not saying it's going to be over, but like hopefully we'll get to a point where we can just live with it and not as many people are dying and things so. Yeah, I think so. I think we have to stay positive and just, you know, hope that it passes. I yeah. noticed you have an eye prestige over there, no? An MP? Yeah, this is actually, no, it's a, it's a problem. It's actually the original racket from Ivanizovic. Oh. So, like, it's uh, it's one of the ones. So, like, I'm trying to exchange my background sometimes here. Yeah. Uh, you see the walls are pretty empty because I needed to remove a couple of things that people shouldn't see at this point, And I don't nah. want to use the, the blurry background when I'm sitting in the office. So, like... Um, no, this is actually like one of his frames, actually, uh, actually also his specs and his, his grip. So I don't know uh, if you can see, like there's his signature on it. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool frame. Like it's a, the, um, the 600, it's a mid, I guess then. Yeah. It's a mid, it's a 600. So it's, it's really nice. Um, I'm, I'm looking like into probably getting it strung up. It's brand new, so it wasn't used. So, but like it was, it is out of his batch of cool. customized frames. Yeah. Yeah. You should, you should have a hit with it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's always worth playing yourself. With, huh? What are you hitting yourself nowadays? Um, right now I'm, I'm using the boom pro actually like uh, with, with, uh, with the retail specs. So I really like that racket. I mean, we spent like months and months and months of developing like uh, especially our our team um the product managers for for the tour rackets and uh, i think the outcome is really really positive it's something different for head in my opinion uh, which we were targeting for um because like we know all the comments out there from from the fan base that we have too many rackets and all that stuff but still you you want to challenge yourself, um, like bringing out something new. You want to address different consumer groups and be more versatile in your offering. So, I think we 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 are coming up with something really nice with with the Boom Collection. I think you you had the chance to hit them as well for quite yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. Right I now, mean, right? they they're growing on me quite a bit. Like I, I even enjoy the MP, which is usually not my standard kind of racket. Yeah. I, the Pro is is probably the pick of the litter but it, it's it's uh, i really enjoy both of them now i mean if I, especially when i change strings i find like Lynx tour works really well in the boom pro yeah uh, i tried Lynx touch which we're going to talk about briefly as well and and i did enjoy that but i hit it just for like 20 30 minutes in stuttgart when i was there for the the uh, tennis yeah. warehouse event you know so that's your why. box your box of um sets are in my office actually so they're gonna leave probably tomorrow cool um, no i'm, so I'm you, really keen to to give it a test, you know, and see see where it, where it goes. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually pretty interesting that you mentioned the MP. Like it's 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 kind of like if you talk about the setup of strings with that racket, like you can you can dial it in in both directions. Either like the easy hitting, like um, plush feel, just go for it kind of racket, which which is more than Lynx Touch. And if you really love that kind of feel and you want that extra and control or a little bit more more pop like you go with Lynx tour for example uh, what i realized actually is that um, quite a lot of um, play testers that actually um, were part of the group who tested Lynx touch pretty early they actually mixed up Lynx tour and Lynx touch which um, makes it a great combination because um, 
yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about Lynx Touch and what the target was and what it what it should address. So it actually makes a lot of sense in terms of that kind of hybrid setup that, mm -hmm. that people try to use. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting. I'm super excited uh, once the string um, gets to the market because the demand is obviously there. We try to address something that I think nobody has done really well yet. There are some options out there that are kind of probably targeting that same consumer group, but mm -hmm. so we tried our best. Yeah, <laughs> I know always. it's a nice, always, nice usually. The, the quick uh, time I had with it was, was a very nice soft feeling string. Uh, I guess it's supposed to bridge kind of a multi-filament slash poly sphere, but it's actually two polys in the construction, right? That's a little bit how it works. Correct. So like, I mean, if we are jumping straight into into the topic, if you like, so the whole intention has been that we, we all know about like the challenges within the string market. First of all, there are so many choices out there because there are many more brands than on the racket side of things. Um, because you have dedicated string brands, you got like us, let's, uh, without sounding arrogant, like the big players like Wilson, uh, Head, Babula. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and what I have seen and what I have observed over the past couple of years already being in the industry, traveling the world, being at tournaments, doing stringing services, talking to retailers is that I think Everyone independent from any brand <laughs> and any preference is, is telling you that people are not restringing the racket often enough. Uh, this being said, um, like hybrid strings, especially hybrid strings, meaning monofilament mixed with multi or with natural gut have mm -hmm. become more popular as well in the, in the world of the recreational club level players. Um, but that being said, this comes with the next challenge. Um, for those kind of players. So if they don't restring that hybrid setup um, regularly, like you you realize a racket deformation at some point. So like I tell this every salesperson, I tell this every retailer to explain to people, get two, like get two old rackets, just, just make sure they are the same racket. Um, do the same string setup, meaning a monofilament and a, a multi or natural gut string. Do the mono on the mains and the multi or gut on the cross and do the other racket vice versa. Do the same tension of both strings, put it in your basement for three months and you'll see what happened. One racket will get shorter, one racket will be longer. And it's minor, it's not that it's gonna be like three centimeters all of a sudden, but like the racket will deform. Um, just the nature of the beast is that the multi or the natural gut keeps the tension much better, much longer. It's like this is how this works. This is one of the big advantages of those constructions of strings. While the monofilament will lose the tension like faster. So what that means at the end of the performance of any racket uh, for any player is that the sweet spot will change. Uh, so basically some sort of the position of the sweet spot will change, which then can lead over time. And we all know that a tennis elbow or wrist injury or shoulder doesn't come from Monday to Tuesday or from Tuesday to Wednesday. It builds up over time. And taking care of your equipment in this sense is mission critical. And this being said, not only for the pro players, as a lot of people believe, oh, this is only for the pros. No, it's even, even more so important if you're not a pro because they can adjust to a lot of things pretty quick. So what the idea has been is like, how can we solve that kind of struggle that the racket gets deformed? And how can we solve the downsides of multifilament strings that a lot of people are also complaining, meaning the string movement, the fraying of the string, the, the higher friction, which ends up in less spin and different trajectory and launch angle of the ball. So the only way to go is basically to do like an extrusion process. And therefore you need to find the right balance to, to, to address. So you can either take a full, full core monofilament string and do it super soft as, as some of our competitors are doing or where you can see that, that others are launching soft versions of their most popular monofilament strings, which is good, but like, um, we wanted to have something that's really specifically targeted to towards that kind of customer that loves that feeling of a hybrid string because they're 
this comes with a lot of benefits like different launch angle um, good spin approach like good touch um, it's it's really nice to play a hybrid string if you like like that kind of impact feel to duplicate that in one string is a challenge um, so so we we um, we went this route with the a co extrusion process and as you mentioned correctly it's basically two monofilament strings in one so we tried different setups, different impact modifiers, different um, kind of proportions of the core and the outer. Like we went through a lot, like probably one and a half, nearly two years went into this string in development. This being said, like it's not constantly testing. It's also that you need to go back to the, let's say drawing board and that you need to talk to the production facility. They need to produce, you need to get all that stuff. So all of this takes a certain amount of time. And yeah, we ended up with, with that construction that you can see on the packaging. I actually got the, the retail packaging here. So like, I hope you can see the cross section. And basically you have this inner core, which is all black. Um, it's, a, it's a soft uh, compound uh, that we use here. And the outer, not wrapping is the wrong word because that would imply that it is filaments, but it's like the outer part is like a stiffer uh, compound. So that mixture makes it possible that when you swing your racket and whether you go, if you go super fast and you want to go for that kind of spin and, and, and style play uh, or player, you can easily do with that string without losing a lot of control. It's definitely less control than on a Lynx Tour or on a Hawk, which, which is the nature. Like also on a hybrid string, you will feel less control than uh, on a full monofilament setup with a stiffer monofilament, which isn't bad. Um, and then like, if you go slow, let's say like you play a slice or you, you are volleying, you feel that more pocketing feeling that a lot of people really love on, on hybrid strings. And that's kind of like the entire intention that we, um, why we wanted to have Lynx Touch. And I think it goes, it will address the needs of a, a broad audience of players and everyone will have to dial in, try a little bit on like whether they like it on a higher tension or on the lower tension, or even go in a monofilament hybrid setup with like a more spin friendly shaped mono on the mains and using Lynx Touch, for example, on the crosses. It will be super nice for junior players that like where I usually recommend to go with full uh, multi-filament setup. This string will benefit for those players too because they will be able to have more spin in their, in their ground strokes uh, without damaging or having any arm issues like building up over time. So I'm, I'm, I'm really confident. I'm looking forward to get this string into people's hands and yeah. If yeah. anyone who is listening to our podcast right now, like is interested, let me know. And we will find a way to, to get a couple sets out to your listeners too. I'm sure. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. I think that many people are interested. I think also it's, it's a timely string. I mean, I, that's what you're seeing as a trend that people are, are, they love the feeling of poly strings or the performance, the control, the spin potential, but they don't love the stiffness generally. And they may, so I think that's where everybody is kind of trying to find like the optimal solution. Like you mentioned, hybrid setups, you need to see hybrids with multis or guts a little bit differently. And I think it was very good that you talked about the deformation of the racket because a lot of people don't have no idea about this. Just they create the, they string up a hybrid and they just leave the racket for X amount of time. But if you just leave it and you're not playing it, I mean, I've, I've done this personally as, as kind of experiments and I've noticed it also from, you know, accidents. So it's like uh, you just, and you pick it up and it plays completely differently. Where it feels very strange compared to how you know it played when you strung it up, for example. So I think that, that people generally leave their strings too long in the rackets. It's something I've tried to educate or talk about in my content. And I think it's great that you're talking about it a lot because it is important to have a relatively fresh string, but if you can, uh, it doesn't have to be be that fresh. But I mean, how often do you think players should think of restringing the rackets? I mean, if if you're not a string breaker, like like some hard hitting spin players. Yeah, I mean, you know me well enough. I'm not the biggest fan of rule of thumbs all the no, time. No, no, I know you can't really. I, I know it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, if you ask me, like, um, 
at least I would I would restring my racket uh, as many times as I play per week in average. So if I if I play three times a year, uh, three times a week, at least you should should restring your racket three times a year. Perfect timing is usually when the when the winter season starts and when the summer season starts. That's where where the at least amount of restringing should happen. Yep. Um, and it's really the at least one. Like in a perfect world, um, if you play three, four times a week, get it strung every four to six weeks, and you will notice like uh, that you feel more comfortable. And for ex- and and especially you don't get used to that numb, like dead feeling of a tennis racket, which is a little bit sad because that's not why we develop all these kind of products. Not only us at Head, all the other brands too. Yeah, there, there were, I, I've seen some discussions uh, and I've had a few as well. Like, do poly strings go dead? I mean, do, if you leave a poly string, I mean, a poly can last a long time without breaking if you're hitting like not so hard and flat. Uh, does the string go dead or what happens with the string over time when you're just oh, leaving yeah. it in the racket? Yeah, it, 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 is, it, it goes dead. Like the elasticity is going out. Um, and then it also depends on where you are, where you store your racket. Like, for example, a person who has has their racket in the trunk in Florida all day long and doesn't play for two or three weeks, that will have a different impact on your string than me putting it in my trunk right now with uh, zero degrees here and and snowing. Uh, It will play different, it will feel different. Um, So like, I don't don't recommend um, like leaving a string too long in, in the racket. And like out of my times, even as a coach and then also as a stringer and in the industry, we always hear like parents, for example, that like, oh, we need a long lasting string because restringing is so expensive and all this stuff. And I always ask, well, what do you prefer? Like investing into the actual career of your kid and like growing it and like avoiding injuries? Or do you want to get to a point where you run into the danger of investing more into doctor's visits? than into restringing. So like, I think it's one of the most important things to do. The things that I always feel, what I try to tell parents, the most important equipments in, in the career of any tennis player is a, a pair of shoes, because it will impact your, your knees, your hips, your back. It just has to fit properly and needs to work out well for the style of play you play. And it's, it's the racket and the string combination together with the right grip size, and actually with the right overgrip to be used, because I think there's like a lot where people can learn and, and figure out. Yeah, I, th- I think um, generally people are pretty poor with, with seeing, I mean, it's, things break or like you really put wear on things in tennis, like you're playing shoes wear down, people who have their overgrips on too long, you know, you're getting these, like, if you're helping someone string a racket, you know, you're seeing their overgrip is like rotten, you know, or, or, or the base grip is, is gone. You know, it's like, uh, I think it's, it's good to keep your equipment in decent order. And that's not a super expensive thing to do, especially if you value your activity and especially if your kids are playing, you know? Uh, so I think that that thing is very important. So, um, yeah. Yeah, just I, look at how much how much is those like if you see it in every tennis club on this world there's these clamps here for you for your elbow for the tennis elbow to make relief on your muscle here yeah. they are at least 60 70 euros that that's three three string drops probably um and and you don't have to wear this you don't have to worry you don't have the pain yeah. so like you, you, there are uh, opportunities to prevent and that, that's also a reason why we have all these options for strings it's not that a lot of um, consumers sometimes feel that like, oh, they are just bringing out new stuff so they can sell more. Well, that's partly how the world works in, in business in general, not only in tennis, but overall it's like to the, the sport became more individual as well, like different play styles, like some are the approaching the net more, some are more behind the baseline. Some people are taller, some t- people are shorter. So the, the, it's it's great that in today's time you actually have the opportunity to find the right setup the perfect setup for your style of play but you need somebody to who gives you the advice and just doesn't give you the average kind of like here you go everyone is playing this so it's going to be good for you i think that's no. not where today's game is at and where today's knowledge is at yeah so like all you do with your your podcast where you're inviting the people the reviews you do i think that's helping people to understand that there's 
more to it and that there is no harm to try different to try out different things yeah i, I think i think I mean, that's the point and, and thanks for mentioning it but but i think it's important that, that people realize there's not a one size fits all that's why i know you and i we don't like to give, give like general statements people ask like what's the best racket like well <laughs> what's the best racket for you depends you know on everything uh, pretty much and the same with the string like what's the best racket paired with this string what's the string? i mean it, it all depends like what what type of playing style you have how hard you hit what's your physical situation are you super fit or are you like having elbow pain you know um so you need to find a experiment a bit and you need to listen to some advice and uh, and you probably will find a way but it, it, it's a very personal approach right so i think that's absolutely that's important absolutely uh, so this string will be the softest poly you have in the segment for now right um not necessarily from a technical standpoint so there's always the let's say the lab data um we we have probably like the overall um from a soft standpoint maybe another string that's that's even softer in the monofilament lineup but like in terms of the impact feel and in terms of the touch and feel yes it, it will be will have the softest feel because you need to you need to like be careful with that kind of soft and like having this from a technical and from a perceived perspective so if the string gets too soft technically like in the from from like a production standpoint and from like a lab data standpoint what you realize and and you probably have noticed is if you have a super soft string it stretches a lot during the tension uh, during the stringing process which on the flip side actually leads to a super stiff, stiff string bed. So some people are super surprised when they see that because they believe they have just bought a super soft string, they use their regular tension and actually the string bed gets stiffer. Um, so that's, for example, a, a lot of people in the past um, where we didn't have all these great options of, of different strings, when they had elbow problems, they believe, okay, we need to go to natural gut. That's, this is going to help my elbow and it's going to solve all my problems. So they strung natural gut all of a sudden at 25, 26 kilos as they did with their monofilament string. And they were wondering that it actually got worse with their elbow because, because the string elasticity and everything made the string bed stiffness stiffer. And yep. so like the opposite is the case of what you wanted to achieve. So that's why it's also important. Talk to your retailer, talk to your coach and get the right advice. What is the right tension? It's also not a every, um, every tension fits all kind of approach. So that's where you need to always be careful on this. Yeah, I, th I think it's important. I mean, like we've talked about that before, I think in our previous chat with Lynx Tour, uh, the the trend of going lower in tension is it, so important maybe sometimes more important than just finding the softest string if your string is still going to string at 25 kilos or 55 pounds the softer string might not help you you know yeah. it, it's, it's better maybe to play with a stiffer string or the string you normally play with and go down to 20 kilos that, that's going to make correct. a bigger impact in a positive way of your game you know so correct and that was was also something that we had in mind when we developed Lynx touch because it's always i think it's super confusing for consumers if any brand or any company goes out and like okay this string you should do 10 percent less than your average uh, the, the other string like they recommend five percent the next one 15 percent so like if you're a consumer you're not like a nerd like uh, you are or myself like you're in it you, you understand you you get it you string by yourself like for a for a general consumer sometimes in the head it must go like boom boom boom, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah. Too, ma too many information and then they back up and like oh let me go with what i'm used to um, so like the idea here was really to, um, that consumers are able to string it just with attention. They are actually using on their current setup without damaging anything. So that was also those, the fine balance that we wanted to find, but you still experience the benefits of, of Lynx touch. Um, it's, it's probably important to mention that you yeah. won't find the advice of, oh, go down or do this or do that, uh, so are you using this string yourself in the boom or are you using it as a hybrid or is it uh, you're experimenting with different strings all the time, I guess? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm definitely experimenting all the time because like I'm always trying to be on top of the game, let's say, and, and figuring out where new opportunities sit and what else we could do. Um, I mean, during 2022, you will see probably in Q3, three new strings coming up that are... Um, manufactured in a completely new factory with like new new uh, materials but they are more for the advanced players and more for the tour level players probably um 
but yeah, right now, most of the time I have two rackets, at least two rackets in my back where I use Lynx Touch or Lynx Tour, um, either or, depending mm. if I play more regularly and I get more into, let's say, into a good um, rhythm, like I tend to like the stiffer polys a little bit more. Yeah. Um, if I'm playing like once a week, like Lynx Touch is always helping me out a little bit to, yeah, stay, a bit more stay depth there. Than, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for, for the performance segment, you said about more strings coming out. I, I guess this one is not something we're going to see as frequently on, on the tour because it, they require usually a stiffer setup or more control setup. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not in, it, it wasn't intended to go out to the tour players and really like, here's the new string from head. You should try it. Like it's going to change your game because it's probably too powerful for these yep. guys. Where I can see it and where a couple of players uh, are probably testing within the off season is really in a hybrid. So they, they combine like a, a stiffer poly with, with that softer links touch. That might be something, especially on the junior side or the up and coming players. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, uh, that's where I would see it. And I, I'm really keen to test that myself, maybe in a hybrid with Lynx tour uh, yeah. or maybe Hawk uh, getting like a, a stiffer and a softer poly is, is always interesting. I, I've seen some really good results from using two polys with different nature, you know, but you, then you need to really experiment to see what works, tensions yeah. and so on. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. So you have more strings coming up. Uh, I mean, I've, I've created some videos and also talked about it. Like you have a lot of rackets and I, 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 that could be a good thing in terms that you have abundance of choice. So you can really find that perfect. Cause I mean, tennis nerds and tennis players are really picky uh, on their equipment uh, on all levels. It, it's pretty true. I've, I've noticed this over the years, but so you will find something hopefully within the lineup, but obviously you can create confusion with a big choice uh, for the consumer. Uh, is the plan to do the same in strings? So you will offer more and more strings. So you actually have like a wider choice or will you keep yourself more limited there? We will keep ourselves as limited as, as we can. So usually like my premise is if we bring something new, something else needs to go. Um, so we, we have to take some tough decisions because it's like the shoes I'm in, like I need to look at the global market and like you can imagine that you with every country manager that we have within head within the organization, like there are certain strings that are maybe important for one or two particular countries, but like globally, they don't, they haven't had the impact that we wished they would have uh, um, from the past. And I'm always looking into modernizing things. So like um, there are some, let's say, best-selling strings, just strings that work, that are out there, that are loved by people. So they stay in line, like take Sonic Pro, for example. Um, that that string is gonna gonna stay there but for example we're gonna take some tough choices so lynx edge is gonna go out of the collection because i believe there is no need to have lynx tour and lynx edge in parallel in the collection um i personally i believe that for how the game has developed and where where the game is going at least what we see lynx tour is the better option than lynx edge and so we need to be like stay true to ourselves and be honest to ourselves that lynx edge might not have been the best option for um, let's say uh, for the global needs of, of tennis players um, hawk rough uh, might be go might be uh, leaving the collection as well like mm -hmm. i think it's it's a great performing string for um, a few players but not for too many players yeah. so as i said like from a business perspective we need to take um, certain decisions. It's still going to be used by two or three upcoming players in a hybrid setup with Lynx Tour. They kind of work themselves through testing strings. So they use Lynx Tour with Hawk Rough, which pure technically might not make a lot of sense, but like they love how it plays. So maybe we will see this string coming back uh, the next couple of years, but for now we might reduce uh, or take it out of our catalog. Um, Sonic Pro Edge might not be uh, staying in, in the collection for, for much longer. And um, yeah, once we have kind of modernized and um, addressed like the modern needs of, of the players with all the monofilaments that we're going to have, like we will probably finish that process by end of 2022, uh, beginning 2023. And that's where then the portfolio is pretty much complete. And then 
there is some dedication going on right now on the multifilament side as well, because I think there is a huge potential as well to come up with some new technical stories. There haven't been really huge innovations on the multifilament side, and uh, it's more complex. It takes much more time to develop a multifilament compared to a monofilament. Mm -hmm. um, it's the nature of the beast. Um, not even a lot of factories are capable of really producing very complex multifilament strings. It's different than to monofilament. Um, and uh, we are looking into new development here too, which probably won't be available before 2023. Cool. Um, so you're planning a natural gut as well? We actually already have a natural gut. Ah, okay, uh, we okay, we actually have um, Taylor Fritz and uh, Ash Barty are actually using um, Taylor is using Hawk with, na with head natural gut and uh, Ash Barty is using Hawk touch with natural gut. Um, but right now we have it only accessible for our pro players because natural gut comes with quite some challenges in terms of the packaging. If, if you don't use it up quite often, like you, they need to be protected with UV light and stuff if they sit on shelf. And so we want to bring ourselves as a brand into the position to be able to launch a natural gut hybrid, probably not even a full set, but um, yeah, we need some more commitment from, from the fans out there. We need more players to, 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 to play head strings. And um, if all your listeners to our podcast are now keen to test head natural gut, send the messages in and I will put some pressure into the market that we need to get it because people want it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, if you haven't played with natural gut, that's what I usually tell players that you should you should definitely give it a try, even if it in a hybrid or uh, depending if you're a flat tailor who likes a classic style, you can even put it in a full bed in like an old school racket and you have a kind of this unique sensation where you won't get it with other strings. And obviously the tension maintenance is less is second to none. So um, yeah, it's, I, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to have it on the market, but I understand it's not easy to sell. Like these days, I guess most juniors you're you're seeing you're working with i guess they're using a full bit of poly most of them uh so that's that's probably where where they everything is going uh, overall you know yeah but that's also where maybe this like the whole links touch using it in a hybrid uh, setup for for the younger players might become a new trend uh, to mix up the monofilaments like in terms of the stiffness rating to get the the benefits as well of that like a kind of softer impact feel and then the the spin potential and especially ball trajectory. I mean, there is also second to none if you play like a monofilament, um, natural gut hybrid, like your ball trajectory, you will see a difference as well, um, which we try to copy as well as Lynx Touch. Um, and, but like, you can do only so much to, to get there. There is a reason why natural gut survived the past how many decades? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, since, yeah. So. Since, since the beginning of tennis, pretty much. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, it's one of those things that you you would think that would have gone away. Like most things in, in tech, like they, okay, this this phase is now faded. But when it comes to a performance thing like tennis, and it, it's it's so clearly loved by, by many pros still, like in a hybrid setup. So, so there's a reason it's still around. That's quite obvious, you know. Yeah, we also know that um, tennis players or especially coaches and stuff, like they tend to be also a little bit more conservative. Yeah. <laughs> um, like for sure, the nerds out there who want to test the new products and stuff, they are open. But in general, we see that like a lot of tennis players are relatively conservative, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just saying. So sometimes it makes it tougher if you come up with innovation that like um, people are open minded to really test it, try it. And yeah, as I, as I mentioned before, as a company, as a brand, you always need to look at numbers as well because you can't just bring out this stuff and uh, put it on the shelf. Somebody needs to sell it. Somebody needs to carry it in their shop and stuff. So we face reality here too. Yeah, of course. And that's that's important. And I think, I, I think it's a sensible approach to... Because, I mean, I test many, many polis in a year usually. And there's like you said, there's plenty of unknown relatively unknown brands and then you the big players of course and uh, the, the amount of poly strings like even some unknown brands produce is insane like it, it's like they have 30 different poly options uh, or something like that you yeah know, like... which 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 is a little bit of a problem and i see this with a little bit of a headache because the thing is that uh, some of these um and and with, with all respect 
like some of the smaller brands, um, they can't actually invest as much into innovation or into testing as maybe we are able to, which is also part nature of the beast. But like they do a good job, but like there are also factories, like many more factories out there that are capable of producing uh, extrusions like monofilament strings. So that's also a reason why there are so many options out there. And then people want colors, they want shapes, they want this and here and there. And everyone tries to find their niche to, to perform well um, from a business perspective. Everyone sees a chance um, with going lower in pricing or whatsoever, which is, yeah, I see this with mixed emotions, um, yeah. not only uh, like with my head glasses on, but like also with, um, from yeah, a it can be it can be more confusing definitely for the consumer because the choice is just uh, nuts you know it's it's not easy to understand and like you said more than rackets even um, if, you, if you go on some of the websites you have partly i think if you go with shape color brand um dimension whatever you have partly like a thousand different strings in monofilaments for example so like who would understand no no i know like, it, it, it it's it's not easy and it, it's like it can be tough for myself, talking from my own uh, approach, that I'm I'm even getting sets to try, and then you're you're just getting lost in everything because there's there's just too much, and then it's hard to keep two things apart sometimes because they are so similar in some cases, and some have a very unique identity, and some are just like the same string pretty much, you you or, or just done in the same exact way, and and you don't really see the purpose maybe of that thing existing because there's already X amount of options on the market in that that category when you're working with with pro players i mean how hard is it to get them to try a new string and uh, and then check it out like i guess the off season is the time now where, where players will try a few different things in their setup to get more out of their tennis yeah definitely i mean we we always like our pro player team is like i mean we are right now so well represented on tour with like all age groups and the kind of players we have so they have done a tremendous job over the past years which also speaks for this product selection that we have as a brand so that those those guys and girls find the right product. Uh, we see more and more um, head players using head strings as well because we have as a brand um, like build up our reputation and with strings, it takes a much longer time to get kind of that trust um, out there. And yes, like it always depends on, coming back to your question, it always depends on where at what, what stage is the player in his career? What kind of season has he just finished up? Like if you have somebody who has just won pretty much everything or kind of like is, is super confident right now with all he has, there is less of a need to, to make them switch or that they are open to even try whether it's a string or a new racket or whatsoever because they say like, no, I, I don't want to, which is understandable on the flip side. Like sometimes I wish they would be more open and see like, okay, maybe I can get another five, 10% better by using something else. But like it's, it's finding the right balance or you have players that are like okay they had a shitty season they want to change something so they are totally open to try something or they have uh, just changed their coach or different views on things now so it's it really depends and that's where we try to be like their point of contact and their experts that uh, where they can rely on so we're working super close it's a combination of our pro player team the r d is involved uh, partly us we are involved on what we are looking into the product so it's uh, i think we have found a really good way to to work with with everyone and um, not saying that only the top level players also juniors and, and things we try to take care yeah and you, you must have had a, a great year this year because there's so i mean the results on the atp and wta tour has been great with your players i guess so i mean that that must reflect on sales as well yeah it didn't harm the business let's say like this for sure i can i can imagine yeah, yeah you see like it's it's like you have these finals where it's like oh there's two head players and the semifinals also two head players and there's like it, yeah, it, the, the, the interesting part is that um, at some point you get to, to, to a stage where, where people and, and players are just curious to also test head products because they see the successes of some yeah. of the players who have made switches and then they get in touch with us and they want to try as well. So not even that we are always approaching, player, but like kind of it spread the word so that's working out well for this guy. So maybe I should try too. And I mean, this is how it goes, like, and it goes in phases. And I think we, we are in a, in a very good shape right now. We have a good offering across the board with, with rackets, with strings. We did, we have a new grip overgrip, which is 
making huge noise and impact in the market mm -hmm. with the Prime Tour grip, uh, I, which um, was just launched this year. And um, we have. Is it different from the Prime Pro? I think that. Yes, I'm... it's different. If you do a ranking, you got the Pro Grip, which is um, the old Agassi Pro Grip as well, which is um, um, kind of like based on the, or it, it is the, the, the Turner kind of style yeah. grip, um, which we actually um, are allowed to sell as well. Um, so you got that dry grip. Um, then you got Prime Pro, which is a little bit tackier than let's say the Pro Grip, but still not super tacky. And now you got the Prime Tour, which adds on the tackiness to it but it's not like glue it's um, probably the best competition that we have now for the wilson pro overgrip and the yonex super grab that has been dictating or those two have been dictating the let's say white uh market of overgrips um, because white is still the most popular color because it's the color parts and everything give you the best sensation of holding a grip and, ah, is um, that, um, th th that's the reason why we're mostly seeing white overgrips yeah like we we do so many tests with different colors so if you have the you, you maybe something you could do in your reviews you can take wh whatever if you take um prime tour and like it's it's going to be available in six or seven colors but like it's it's still the most popular and among players is always white yeah um and if you take a white grip and a black overgrip like you can do whatever you you want to make it feel the, the same. same the black version or the more colorful you go slightly slippery it gets yeah i know no i i the reason i was asking this partly is because i i've noticed this myself when i've used different versions of different overgrips and i thought i mean it's the same with strings like we talked about the color of strings and how they affect the the performance of the string and people think you're you're talking out of your ass kind of but but it's actually true and the, the same thing i've noticed with with grips is that okay the, the black i mean i i find much better tackiness from the white over grips even if it's the same brand the same model of, of grip you know so it, it's i'm not shocked but it ha i'm happy to see that i'm not imagining things you know <laughs> No, and it's it also comes with like there are let's say chemical or constructional reasons for it, which like I don't want to dive into that because that would be too much. But like overall, for example, with a tennis ball, you could technically do a blind test, meaning like you have uh, ten yellow tennis balls with no logo, and people really like you can figure out which one they prefer, and you get like an honest opinion. Mm. What happens with a grip racket or a string? You immediately get a reaction from from a player or a person in terms of the design the look yeah. so if you have like whatever an all black frame with a black string and a white grip people will love it because it looks so clean and nice so their perception or when they go on court might be more positive than if you take i'm just picking a color if you take a light blue racket with a a bright green string and a neon yellow grip people would yeah. like the, the the amount of people that would actually prefer that combination just from a look would say like mm, i'm not sure if i want to play even want to play with it so there's also this kind of factor factoring in that people will have immediate an, an immediate opinion and perception of if they prefer or don't well, wow. yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I know that from, from it, it is difficult with blind testing in that sense because because you're gonna get some perceptions being set straight away before you even start hitting the tennis ball, right? So that's that's what I, I've heard as well. Like you're getting because people tend to like pretty clean things, like whether yeah. it's an all white, all black or something, not too aggressive. And you see that also with with the product launches or rackets that you do, for example, you've gone pretty bold with the colors. And you're gonna get a lot of hate love but if you go yeah. like all black uh, you're gonna get pretty steady like okay some people might say it's boring but overall i think the perception will be generally a little bit more positive or easier to sell overall yeah but and on strings like we we can go we can meet with 100 people that play like whatever lynx tour in champagne color in orange and in gray and we will get a whole mixed emotion of like which one is better and that's where like how do players hit the ball and stuff but like there is a difference in the colors it's minor it's not huge but there is a slight difference in in the colors usually people tend to tell that on monofilament strings the lighter you go in color the more lively the string gets the darker you go it, it gets a little bit more let's say um 
dead in feel, like a bit more kind feel of controlled. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, I really noticed that. Like, I mean, if you put like a lime green crazy string, it's going to have a more vibrant. And, and it's, it's not like, I mean, it could be imagined because like, oh, this looks vibrant. So it's going to be vibrant. But you no. really notice it if you're playing a lot and testing all kinds of strings in all kinds of colors, you know, from the, from the same, uh, same manufacturer. So in, in the case of Lynx Tour, because that's been a huge bestseller for you, right? This, since yeah. we talked last time, it's been, I, I see it everywhere. I have a few friends that just like, oh, I bought another reel because I, they just love that string. Um, so how do they perform differently in the different colors? So the orange is the most lively and the, the gray is the most dead or is the where is the champagne yeah within? yeah yeah probably the champagne sits right in the middle yes yeah, somewhere like yeah, yeah. I, I did notice that like i with the orange you, you're getting a little bit more uh, happening in the string bed uh, i end up probably using the champagne the most in my case but but uh, because it looks pretty cool i think <laughs> it looks nice in the boom pro for example it's pretty pretty cool combination yeah definitely definitely or maybe a black option might be something for the future that people are looking for. I don't know. Maybe you can ask your 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 listeners and your yeah, followers yeah. if they would want to see a, a black link tour in the future too. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, some players are really picky on the string color. I mean, I, I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback sometimes from like, okay, I only want to play gray strings or black strings, uh, especially those kind of things. They don't want to even, you know, play with a white string, it's dirty, <laughs> you know, or the... Or like a lime green string looks crap in some rackets, for example. Yeah, and, and sometimes like if you if you talk about making players switch and players from all sorts of levels, um, if they get a string that completely looks different to what they used to be playing, there's also a hurdle that you have to overcome. So sometimes if you get a string that's more similar in terms of color, it's it's sometimes easier to get people. Um, into a new string yeah um, but coming back to the color actually something i wanted to mention about lynx touch so like we call this this color kind of transparent black um if you if you hold uh if you hold the string it looks grayish just the set yeah that's that's what i saw it. yeah 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 but once you string it up depending on the light where you are it's going to be it's super interesting and super funny like depending on you uh, how the racket you hold the racket and stuff um, the entire string back can look all black it could look nearly all transparent or you sometimes see like the mains more black and the cross is more transparent or vice versa it really depends on how you hold the racket which which is also interesting because that shows that you can see the tech of the two different strings in, yeah, yeah, in exactly. one uh, and it also gets some like nice visual effects um, uh, in, in into the the string bed yeah, I did notice that. Like, it does have a more of a kind of a three D feeling to it in a way yeah. because you're seeing the the two cores of the string. Yeah. Um, when it comes to durability, I mean, it, is it gonna not last as long for some players than than, for example, a stiffer string? I would assume. Sure. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we will we will have it in sixteen gauge and and, and seventeen, so one twenty five, one thirty. Um, so definitely the 130 will last longer, uh, nature of the beast than the thinner one, yeah. but it's, it's not intended to be like the most durable, um, poly that you can play for two years. It's, it, no. it is really developed on the benefits of playability, uh, not being harsh on your arm, but like you don't see the breakages that you would see in a traditional multifilament string, for example, and especially more consistency in the playability because compared to a multi, it wouldn't fray or anything. Yeah. So what is the release date of the string so people can buy uh, beginning it? beginning January together with a with a with a Boom Pro like I would need to pick the date it's probably around the 15th of January or something okay. when it will hit hit the market very uh, cool. globally but again like if people are now getting curious due to our podcast and due to our chat uh, let me know and I'm pretty sure we will find a good way to distribute a couple of demo sets prior to Christmas to people I'm sure people so would, they, would love that yeah yeah. People love to test new things and new strings. Um, yeah. So, three gauges, one thirty to one twenty is my guess. Is that no? One, one, no, no. We we are not going to go down the, to the one twenty route because that's too thin. Uh, right? It's too thin for the combination of two strings in itself, and it's actually it doesn't make a lot of sense at that point. Uh, wh what's out there right now is the one twenty Lynx Tour, right? like that. That's available now uh, okay. in the market. I can try that. Yeah. Some some countries have picked it yet uh, for their retail. Some some don't, but like it's in general, it's gonna, it's it's available in all the colors. How important is is the gauges for uh, for your sales and so on? Like how picky are 
players with finding the correct gauge. I mean, 130, 125, I guess, are the most common ones. For uh, sure. The most common ones, but like what we see is a, is, is a slight trend to like the thinner gauge, but like it depends on the market too. Like um, it's, it's interesting to see, but uh, the thinner gauges are not taking over or anything. It's just that we see a little bit more demand, um, but that's why we are also mindful in like what we are launching. Yeah. Depends always which kind of sound you prefer out of a tennis racket, right? Like, so you need to find the right balance. Um, like I'm, for example, I'm, I love to play without dampener since my junior years. I, I very rarely use a dampener to try something. It's really just if something annoys me, like, like for example, for my personal taste, I don't like that super high pitch. Um, I like more that plush, not damp feel, but like a plush feel where it sounds solid. Mm -hmm. um, and um, without the dampener I get a better sense of where my sweet spot is because if I'm out of my sweet spot it sounds strange and I know I have to adjust and either move better or swing better yeah no it does dampen the feedback as something yeah. I want to ask you because you're you're the you're I guess the, the head of accessories and strings and everything um, dampeners do they make a difference for comfort yeah, um, I mean, there is always this debate on like how much you can measure all of this. Yeah, but I know, for I know, sure, right. it changes the vibration of the string bed. So even if it maybe doesn't do technically, but like it will change the perception of a player on impact. Uh, and that might come with the benefit of that a player would tell that he feels less har harm on his arm. Because... If you, if you imagine if you have a, a metal plate and you, you punch a metal plate with a hammer, it's at super high pitch. You feel like, oh, this is stiff. That, that must hurt or that's kind of like strong. Mm. And if you dial it down, dampen it with a rubber surface on top, you're like, oh, yeah, it's nice. It's, probably it's okay. Uh, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense what I'm trying to explain. But no, like, no, I, I understand. It's, it is like, a lot yeah. of the perception of, of yeah. people in their head. And that's why the sound of a of a racket or of a racket and string combination is is so important for a lot of players i mean what we see for example if we go on court and measure the ball speed and stuff that sometimes people tell you like oh this is like amazing it's the fastest ball i ever hit and like you look at the data and like no it's not but like the sound made the person like gave him the perception that it was just a bomb that he dropped a bomb on the other yeah. side of the court so and that can be quite addictive and also confidence boosting, I guess. Yes. So it's like 100%. when you're driving a, a fast car, uh, if you have a Porsche and you have like, it, it, it's really loud and compared to driving a Tesla and it's like super silent, but it might go faster than the Porsche, but you just Correct. prefer the feeling of the Porsche, Correct. for example. We, we see this a lot with people like who maybe are not the target group of a prestige racket, but like they, they get their hands on it, they try and they're like, oh my God, I can go super fast with that racket. Like, no, it's more that perception because, because of the control of the frame and the precision of the frame, more balls are going inside the court, so they get more confident while swinging. Yeah, and, and get swings faster. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. I think that happens with a lot of pros. Like they need to control so, because they swing so fast anyway. While for us mere mortal players, it might not always make sense to go with low power and then trying to always swing because you you don't have the either energy to go for a full match or you're not going to be on time for the ball. So be able to yeah. actually <laughs> use the yes the racket to its full potential, kind of. That that's yes. I think is an important distinction. But yeah, yeah it's, it's all, I think it's all personal. I think that's where it's a good takeout from all this. It's like, it's such a personal thing. Whether you like the sound, whether you like the feedback of the string bed without the dampener, or if you like the more muted feel, it's all related to your personal preference. Like what, what kind of thing makes you feel good when you're playing tennis? I think that's what it's all about really. And then obviously the results, but but yeah, maybe maybe you can ask your followers would be very interesting to get uh, some feedback about like which kind of sound they prefer how they even would describe the sound of a racket like we always throw um, wordings around with like damped or a plush or whatsoever and this i think everyone has a different interpretation of what those words mean to them or pingy or yeah and stuff so it would be really cool if like we can we can get some more insights of your followers of like how they feel because that makes us better in our development if we understand that much better and we have actually taken a lot of approaches to talk to people about it 
Yeah, no, I think that would be great. I mean, uh, as, as always, I will ask everyone to give their feedback, and people generally give their feedback, so it's it's. No, it's don't, good. don't worry about that. No, no, <laughs> no. Like, usually... that, that's what we love. That only makes us better, you know. Like yeah. we are not like none of us is like we we all here, and I can speak for all of my colleagues uh, that are working on rackets, on shoes, on, on, on me, on strings, even like or, or on bags and stuff. We are fully passionate about the sport. Uh, we 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 love we love tennis. We love the other racket sports. Um, but we only can get better for sure. We all have our own opinion. We have all our own observations and um, perceptions and experiences, but it's super important to get like people view on things. It's, it's so important. And the more you get, the better you get, like, and yeah. the more you can question yourself if you're actually moving in the right direction. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. And I think that's, that's, that's the fun part of working in tennis is that, there's a lot of passion in in with people working in whether they're coaches or working for manufacturers or brands, oh, yeah. uh, you know it, it's a it's a sport where we're all kind of in love with the sport and I think it's it's a great feeling and a great vibe and community to be a part of, right? Yeah, and I mean like uh, look at your followers, your listeners. They are super passionate, whether they do it professionally or just as a yeah. hobby. They are passionate about the sport and they want to know all these things. So and. Like I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you. Having those kind of conversations, they always go here and there during the conversations, and they yep. take some time. And it's pretty cool that people actually take the time and listen to us, which is which is fun. Yeah, no, I, that that's what I like. I also like that it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's hard to you, new things pop into your head when you're talking to like-minded uh, people who love the same thing that you do. So it's it's easy to kind of get distracted and and get lost. But uh, yeah, I hope I haven't taken too much of your time today on a no, no, public no, no, holiday. No no ple pleasure pleasure to be here it actually made it more relaxed uh, and i had the time um to yeah, really okay, talk good. to you and dive into the details so yeah made it much much easier yeah so Lynx touch coming out mid-jan so people should give it a go uh, if you're really keen to try it you know you reach out in the comments or uh or to head in some way and you you can maybe get some demo sets I will set that up uh, you also have a you have a new stringing machine coming out as well you have a lot of things happening in your your company yeah. right yes 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 yeah the the new strain machine is is actually coming out it's like a, a it's not a hard date where we launch it and like in most markets it's already available it's kind of a soft launch approach that we took here um and like uh, first time people have seen it were the limited edition machines that we use at the labor cup stringing service in the, in the blue and red color it was the only time that you see that that particular machine were only four machines that we had there. And then in New Wells, we used the, the new machine this year, like in October. Cool. Yeah. And you've been a part of developing that one, right? So yeah, it's under my belt, basically. Yeah. I'm, I'm responsible nice. for the machines. Yeah. Impressive but, stuff, Dennis. All right. I'm going to thank you now. And uh, thanks again for your time. Whenever you want to talk tennis stuff, you know, I'm here. <laughs> so yeah, if, if, if people like to listen to us talking, like I'm more than happy to do this on a regular base. And not only if we have new products coming out, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That always was, here. Was, always fun. Always fun. All right. Same thanks, here. Dennis. I, ho I hope Thank you enjoy you. Your, your public holiday now. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Huh? Take care. Ciao, ciao.